His style has been described as a brave and vulnerable voice that shines light on issues affecting queer immigrant youth and the many disenfranchised community in the U.S. and throughout the world. Please welcome Yosimar Reyes. Buenas noches. Um, it's nice to be here. Um, so um, I'm a poet. I'm more, mainly spoken word. Um, so I do a lot of storytelling and I tell a lot of stories about immigrants because I'm a little immigrant um, and I like to, you know, tell those narratives. Um, and since right now, you know, immigration is a very hot topic and it so happens that I'm queer too and like that shit's popping. Um, <laughs> And I'm undocumented, so people really like that shit. Like, oh my god, that's cool. <laughs> and you're right, I want to hear it. Um, so I write a lot of stories about that. Uh, um, so yeah, um, 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 this, next, this first piece is titled um, Loving in, in Times of War. I was born with the heart of a woman. I know that's some bullshit to say, but sometimes I feel like this is the truth of my nature. Yo crecí en una casa de puras mujeres. Mi abuelito was the only male figure around, but he always kept to himself, only speaking when someone was really in trouble. He drank a lot. Maybe that's why, for the most part, everyone always left him alone. Mi abuela's house has always been a place of refuge. Whenever my tías got into it with their husbands, they would come to mi abuela's house and spend the night. Abuelita would always open the door and always advise them to work it out, because for her, a single immigrant woman with kids in this country needed the protection of a man, and that's why she always advised them to go back no matter how bad the situation was. She knew about struggle, about being beaten, about being cheated on, but her, to her this was survival. To her, we were far away from home, and the bills were constant enough to keep one slave to labor. Some of my tías would stay with weeks, for, with weeks at a time, even though they lived relatively close because most Mexican families live within radius of each other. Since most did not work and relied on their husbands for money, they would spend the day around the house. They kept busy, they would clean, cook, and do laundry. I never saw any of them simply sitting and watching TV. In fact, the TV, the TV was never on. They always had the radio on blast, listening to the radio station and calling in to make dedications. This is where my primas learned the bad habit of sending shout outs to their homies. I always remember the loud music and the smell of pine so. They always scream, Gordo, parate, vas a llegar tarde a la escuela. It was seven in the morning and they would be hard scrubbing the linoleum floor. I got ready, went to school, came back and their asses would still be cleaning. The radio would still be playing mopey ass songs that made me drowsy or that remind me of that one summer I was forced to work construction with my stepdad so I could learn to be an alleged man. How I fucking hated waking up at five in the morning all cold and the radio playing Ramona y a las tristes recuerdos. Too fucking early for that shit. They were clean through as yes, they were cleaning their souls. They clean, cleaning gave them peace. It kept them thinking about their failed marriages, about how complete they felt. They scrubbed the windows, the toilet, the bathtub. To them, everything felt dirty. And I just watched them as they were setting these tears from their own bodies. I think I learned how to love from them. Listening to Maricela, Los Buquis, Los Temerarios, and Bronco. All this music that to me was really Mexican. Songs about longing, about despair, about loves that can never be. Mi tías would sing these songs con sentimiento, like if they were be living these same narratives and I always wonder why they felt so alone, why they always chose to love men that didn't love them back, why they chose birth children for men that always ran away. I never understood how my tías and all their beauty could fall in love for men that could never step up, step up to the plate. I'm a queer brown boy trying to understand why the women in my family have loved so blindly, why even now as an alleged male I still follow these same patterns of loving, only this time I love in a different tune. I spend my days listening to Ombre tracks that would have anyone guessing I'm a single black female in the inside. There is something about the way Mary J sings, about the way Badu's next lifetime hits close to home, even how tragic Fantasia is. The cadence in their voices that makes my heart flutter, that reminds me and makes me wish for a certain someone that would make me feel whole, only that I'm more critical now or jaded if we must state the obvious. It seems to me that as we grow up, our hearts slowly become chipped to the point that we now love with walls around them. We love in fragments because we are afraid to give everything away, we, everything we have left. For we have left broken pieces of innocence with every other man that broke their promises, starting with our own fathers. My tías taught me how to love in silence, how to show your affection for the man you love, not in words, but in actions, not through servitude, but shit that is intentional, like cooking, like folding his clothes, like rubbing his back, shit that is domestic, but to them was the only way to stretch their affection toward their partner. Now I'm not the type of person that will cook for you, or for your clothes, but I've noticed that the way I love is without words, even as a poet. The things I do for people I love are intentional shit, like sharing my knowledge, the lessons life has taught me, books I read, things to build strong spirit. Time and time again, I have offered my medicine to men who have not necessarily learned how to appreciate it, but for me, it felt healing to give. 
I look at my tias and the way they dance, the way they laugh, the way they kiss my tios, the way they do things around the house, and I wonder if on one day I could be them, if I could love a man the way they do without any critical analysis, without expectation, simply love in this state of nothingness, in this state of struggle. I wonder when I will stop loving men that are not men, when my loving will not be a tool of survival but a conscious, no conscious choice of my making. My tias have taught me so much, mainly how to walk away and come back to the middle for understanding. It is to them that I owe my voice and for them that I seek a love that's pure and innocent. We have loved through genocide, wars, through migration, and even death. It is this love that has given us the hope to keep on living. <laughs> um, so I write a lot of poems about uh, my family. I grew up in Eastside San Jose, and if you've ever been to Eastside San Jose, there's a lot of Mexicans. Uh, so I grew up with a lot of Mexicans, uh, and this was pretty tight. Mexicans are nice. Um, and and um, I grew up with my grandma, and if you grew up with your grandparents, you kind of know that um, they tell you the same story and over and over and over and over again. So my grandparents, I feel like they're really powerful storytellers, because after you repeat the same story, you got to master it, you know? Um, <laughs> And so my abuelita is definitely a huge uh, influence in my work. And it so happens that I also, I'm a little queer too. Um, so I grew up in the hood being queer. So I have all these stories of, you know, people calling me a fag and all that stuff. Uh, but now they like me, so it's cute, you know? Um, <laughs> So uh, this next poem is titled Acts of Resistance. Um, and I wrote it because, um, you know, as activists and, you know, people in the Bay, we're all like progressive and shit. Um, and so we're always like committing acts of resistance, you know, against, you know, the, the white supremacist system that keeps us oppressed as, you know, people of color and stuff like that. Um, so I felt like, you know, what is the biggest act of resistance we can commit as queer people of color who have been conditioned to believe that we are not human, especially as undocumented people, because they tell us that we don't belong here, right? And I felt like the biggest act of resistance that we can commit as somebody that's queer, somebody that's dispossessed or disenfranchised is love yourself and make love to one another, make love to one another, right? So this poem's titled Acts of Resistance. This is not fucking. Not to be confused with love making, this is resistance. Your hand pressed upon my chest, the way, the way your lids feel on mine, this can never be anything but that. Some say we were not born to be interconnected like this and to think people have died for us to feel so complete. You on top of me saying this feels right and it does. Never for a moment that I would think I would find myself in this predicament, whispering your name as if I was in deep prayer. So in the blessings I envision, I see your hands caressing the parts of my body I have grown to be ashamed of. You make me feel me in its totality, because every time we're interconnected like this, I feel stronger like somehow through this fucking love making, call it whatever, I am home. So I open the doors of my body to you, no longer afraid over the ghosts that haunt me, the ones that came inside and left me empty, took the innocence I sold for acceptance, you bring warmth. After the heated bodies, I'm surprised you're still here, holding my hand, telling me I should not feel dirty because rituals like this do not involve bloodshed. This is resistance, because brown boys are not supposed to love like this, we're not supposed to fuck like this, we're supposed to take break into women's bodies and leave them homeless. We're supposed to inflict our power on the bodies of those that have nothing but love to give. This is resistance. You and I whispering in the middle of the night, laying side by side, your arm as my pillow. Your stories is all I want to hear. This is not fucking. This is resistance. Brown boys are not supposed to love. We're simply born to fuck each other up. So now that we're getting ready to do this again, I want you to hold me. But this time, pretend that we're committing this act of resistance. We're regaining everything that was taken away from us, our dignity, our pride, our love for one another. Do me with justice. My mother always told me that going against authority would kill me. And if it does, there is no other way that I want to die. But with you by my side, both of us shouting, fuck the police, this is frontline resistance. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I'm just going to do one short poem. Um, this poem, it's, it's, it's always, I always do it in the beginning. I don't know why I decided to do it in the end. And it's titled Lo Que Soy, and Lo Que Soy is, it translates to what I am. And I feel like a lot of times, you know, you get, you know, people want to be, you know, they want to be nice, and they want to know where you're from, right? Um, but there's a lot of the implies when you ask somebody, oh, what are you? Where are you from? You know, because it makes you think that you're not from here, right? And I've been here since I was three years old, so I feel like I'm more American in a way, the culture, but I'm still not American because I don't got papers. Um, but when people imply like, oh, so where are you from? You know, I'm like, oh, I'm from Eastside San Jose. And they'll be like, no, but where are you really from? 
uh, from Eastside San Jose. Because <laughs> even though I'm from Mexico, like, I have no memories, you know? I don't remember anything about Mexico. And also when they tell us, you're like, oh, so what are you? Like, you know, like you're some alien and shit. Um, so I wrote this piece, and it means what I am. This is my nature. The tooth in my heart, the breath in my lungs. Yo soy the one you fear. The one that got away, so el único que se te fue. The one that grew from your hate and still manages to love you. Yo soy el hijo que nunca será padre. El nieto que nunca será husband. I am the near and the far of earth and sky. El sol y la luna. Soy everything that is in between. Entre el hombre y la mujer. Soy el ser que por tu ignorancia no quieres reconocer. I am the one you define with hate. The one that doesn't fit your labels but manages to reclaim his name. Yo soy dualidad. Y aunque digas que esta es la misma canción, el mismo pin poema, te repito que nosotros seguimos hablando de compasión, yo soy de fuego y tierra, de mares que liberan de muertes silenciosas, yo soy la muerte que me deseas, I'm of destruction and reparations, of freedom in cages, I'm the bird that still sings praises, y con todas mis fuerzas te digo que tu odio me libera, porque más que joto enjaulado, yo soy el poder de la conciencia. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Yossi Marais, that was awesome. Thank you for being here.